So today we're looking at one of these guys. This happens to be an engine coolant temperature sensor. If you happen to have code P115, it really is only two things that uh, could be your problem. Number one is the harness connector that plugs into the coolant temperature sensor is no longer working correctly. Maybe you have a cut somewhere in the wire or you have a problem with the coolant sensor itself. And I'll show how you can test this sensor and pinpoint where the problem is. So of course the first step is locating the sensor and if we take a look right here it happens to be this guy right here. Now if you're not sure just do a Google image search for your vehicle and very often you'll find a ton of images showing where the sensor is located on your vehicle. So what we need to do first is verify power is getting to the sensor. So in other words if you have code P115 it either means that power is not getting to the harness or that the sensor itself is bad. So we'll test both parameters. Take a look right here, there's a tab that you press in with your thumb and then you push up and off the harness connector. So now what we want to do is see if power is getting to this harness connector. So of course we'll need a multimeter. Just place the multimeter to the volt setting. If you don't have one of these guys, you can pick them up for around $15 to $20, really anywhere. Home Depot, Lowe's, your auto parts supplier, Sears. And you have two leads coming from the multimeter. The red goes to the harness connector. The black is engine ground. That's any good metal point. You can even use the negative terminal on the battery. Some people don't like to do that, but it will work. What we're going to do is turn the ignition key to the on position. You're not going to start. You're not going to crank the car. You're just going to turn the ignition key to the on position. So again, the black wire is to ground or any very good metal point on the vehicle. And the red lead, in this case, goes to terminal 2. Again, if you're not sure, just do a Google image search or just a Google web search and you can very easily, very often really pick it up quite uh, quickly. And what we should see here is 5 volts and we do, we have 4.8 volts. So that verifies that power is getting to the harness connector. Now if you're not getting a reading here, just check the wires in the back. Sometimes they may be frayed and uh, of course that's going to be your problem. So just you want to verify that power is getting to this harness connector. Now of course turn off the ignition key and the next thing that we want to check is continuity. Continuity essentially means that two points make a connection. To do this the black wire stays on your ground and we need the continuity setting on the multimeter. Now when you do have continuity the multimeter will have an audible alert telling you that you have good continuity. Now in this case the black wire stays to engine ground and the red wire goes to terminal number one. And, and as you can hear, we have good continuity. Now again, if you're not getting a uh, continuity alert here, again, make sure that your wires are in good shape. Just check with your vehicle because every vehicle is a little bit different. But usually if you are getting code P115, these guys tend to be in good shape and it's actually the sensor itself. So let's go ahead, I'll show you how you can test the sensor itself and if it's bad, go ahead and replace it. Now you can actually test the sensor while it's still in the vehicle but I'm going to take it out so you guys have a better view because it's so cramped in here. So in this case this is a, uh, an 18 millimeter screw so we'll just place the wrench over the sensor here and some coolant may come out when you do this, but not too much. And there you go, there's your coolant sensor. Now if you take a look, we have two metal prongs in the sensor. And what we want to do is take a resistance or an ohms reading test. So again, we use the multimeter to do this. And we want the kilo ohms setting down here. We should be in the ballpark of one and a half to two ohms around there in that ballpark. So we take the red wire, touch one prong, 
the black wire will touch the other. Let me just move this up so you guys can see this. And we have two ohms. Now, this sensor is working perfectly well. If you do not get a reading, then your sensor is bad. But let me show you how you can go a little bit further and verify that this sensor is indeed working. Now what I'm going to do is place the end of the coolant sensor into a little bit of water. Now what we're going to do, as the water heats up, the resistance should decrease or the ohms reading should decrease. So let me just zoom out here a little bit and we'll do this quickly so this won't get too hot but we just want to verify that the resistance does drop so again we do the exact same thing black to one prong red to the other prong so already we're at 1.9 1.8 so as you can see the resistance is dropping and this verifies that uh, the sensor is working correctly uh, if you want to go this further step, you can. You don't have to, but it just shows how the, uh, the sensor works. And that's all there really is to it when it comes to testing and replacing one of these guys. As you can see, it's not really a tough job. Anyone can do it in their uh, garage or in their driveway. And if you'd like to see more auto repair videos, just visit us on carsandtoys.net.